Hello folks, it's me, I'm Big and I'm back. And this is Let's Play Super Robot Wars Alpha uh, Portable A for the PSP. What I'm doing now is I'm waiting until it crits! Okay. Yep. Actually. So, yep. Just doing this to replicate exactly what needs to be done. What I needed to do is actually wait until Kazuyo's attack crits. So I've been trying moving characters around. This is turn. This is turn. Nine. Okay, we're, we're good, we're good. And we're trying to get the weapons. Repugsen Tsukuzuki to critical, and I've succeeded! And that will kill the enemy. Yay! Kazuya is level 9 now, and he has spirit. <laughs> Wonderful. SP5 acquired. Thank you. Curse you, Earthlings! Retreat! Hey, are you alright? Uh, who are you? Don't worry, you're safe now. What's your name? Do you live nearby? Uh, er Erika. Erika? What a beautiful name. O oh yeah, I'm Kazuya Ryuzaki. Kazuya. Kazuya Ryuzaki. Uh, I thought it was done for. I thought it was unable to actually be able to win. So what did you just say? Sir, Lady Erika, we were witnessing during the previous battle. How could this be? She was nursing injured soldiers. She may have gotten too close to the battlefield. Fine, her foolish girl. I told you to be careful. How could you worry your brother so? Oh, plot. <laughs> okay, I'm a little bit happier now that I actually succeeded in... in killing the enemy and not lock myself out of out of not being able to kill the enemy Ugh. I really couldn't just get fired up about fighting those guys I know how you feel that incident really shouldn't have happened incident what are you talking about oh you're joking right you know about how the negotiations with barn broke down negotiations broke down uh, hmm are you alright, Biggie? Did you remember something? Ah, I wish. It's all still in forgotten land, you know? <laughs> forgotten? What's going on here? You see, he's amnesiac. Huh? Don't worry about it. I may have forgotten most things, but at least I remember my name. How to get dressed and my potty training. <laughs> oh, I'm piloting my Zenith lab. Oh, it's a good thing you didn't forget that much. Anyways, I think there's some catching up I need to do. Can you fill me in a bit? Actually, I know how that peace talks have failed. Do you know more, Ryo? I don't know much else either. I think this is the perfect moment to explain this clearly. You're right. So... I'll start. You see, the Barmians weren't invaders originally. The peace talks would have done someone when, uh, on the moon, right? More precisely, on a colony near the moon. They wanted to immigrate there, from what I understand. Their home planet, Barm crashed into the sun, their son, Argol, and was destroyed. So they're orphans of the sky, eh? Well, we couldn't we just let them come to our planet? It's big enough for all of us, isn't it? It's not that simple. We're talking about one billion Barmians. One billion? Our side was divided to bring those in favor and those opposed. Those ending in those in favor won the debate. Thanks to the advent of space colonies, we can just create new places to live. But Daisuke was from Planet Freed. He's proved that we could be friends with an alien race. If everything was going so well, what happened? Well, during their negotiations, representatives of the Planet Bomb, Grand General Leon, was poisoned and died. He was poisoned. What's with him? The Barmians concluded that it was Earth's fault and declared war. Oh, did you ever find out who the real culprit was? No. That's possible that it was the anti-immigration side of the planet. 
I get it. The Barmians think that the Earthlings are the peace-hating bastards that killed their beloved leader. Thuzia probably has it in the worst in the whole matter. Why? See, during that time, his father was... He was... What happened? He was killed, too. Oh, no. Jesus! <laughs> I heard that the negotiations broke down. The Barmian Imperial Guards opened fire, and... There were a lot of casualties. It happened ha then? Yes. Tazio's father was trying to persuade the opposing faction to change their mind and push for peace. But then that happened. As you can imagine, Kazuya has a lot of complex feelings regarding the Barmians. Though his father's dying wish and achieving peace with Barm, or avenge his father and defeat the Barmians, huh? What's going on? I feel like I, I already know this. And there you have it. By the way, where's Kazuya? I haven't seen him in a while. This whole time, he's been with that woman we saved. That beautiful woman. What, are you jealous, Nana? Most men are attracted by good looks. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> Amnesia? A doctor said she should recover her memories in time. <laughs> Another amnesiac. It's possible to get involved in that battle traumatized. Getting involved in that battle traumatized her. I'm sorry. I. Don't worry. You'll remember everything sooner or later. Forgive me, my lord. I wasn't able to find Lady Erica anywhere. You must have searched poorly, General Balbus. Balbus. <laughs> are you implying that my eyes are bad, General Riza? Oh, stop it! There's nothing else we could do if you couldn't find her. It's possible that she was captured by Earthlings. She might still be alive, so... Not another word, Balbus. What would you have done in her place? Do you think you could stand to live an ignominious... Ignom ignominious... Ignominious life of imprisonment inside an Earthling cage? I would take my life, as any proud Barbian would do. That's my sister. She's one of the proudest women of Bar. For the member of a superior race, being captured by one of those base earthlings is a face worse than death. And then, after finding in her in such a plight, Erika must have chosen to die by her own hands. My sister is gone. There's no one left to save. Y yes, sir. Oh, Erika. And we're in the Diamond control room. Why are you so kind to me, Kazuya? That's because. Because you're so beautiful, Erica. Uh, that's. Oh, man. Okay. I don't need your pity. But it's true. You're beautiful. It's good making me blush in this game. It doesn't matter where you are or where you were born. Oh, Kazuya. But I don't know who I am. I don't know who I can trust. You can trust me. I can trust you. <laughs> Look at them in their own world. Oh, so jealous. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's one world you never know, boss. Oh, Koji. Oh, that ain't true. I'll show you. Someday. I lost my memory too, you know. We should totally get to know each other. Ah, 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 ah. Just, just leave them be. Please, I was joking. No need to hit me. <clears throat> Shouldn't you be focused on the battles ahead instead? Ah, Secretary Niwa. I was contacted by the Science Fortress Lab. Did Tetsuya and, Tetsuya and Jun get here in time? Just barely. However, they have to ask to the Great Messenger and Venus A to not be part of Lando Bell. What? They said they didn't want to leave the lab unprotected. I see. Well, we can only wish them luck. And after I just upgraded their max too. Wonderful. What the? What's with that attitude? I wanted you to change their minds. One or two research labs are nothing compared to the whole planet. You know what I think? I think they're cowards. They don't think they want to fight, and they're so they want to protect their lab instead. What was that? That ain't right, Mr. Secretary. The lab is basically their base. Losing would be pretty bad, you know. How dare such a lowly soldier speak back to me, the Secretary of Defense? I should fix that attitude of yours. Fix? That means he likes to beat you up. <laughs> Just stop it, Mr. Secretary. Instead, how about you try to behave like a real Secretary of Defense and worry about your subordinates for once? You're 
quite well one time, and you're already so full of yourself. I never expected Great Massinger and Venus Ace to abandon the battle and get back to the lab. Eh, but you should have thought of that, brother. It's your fault we lost. How dare you? We only lost because of your pitiful fighting skills. Oh no, you ain't pushing this on me. Oh, what a noisy lot. Ignore them. At least they'll stop trying to look so big for a while. Destroying the Science Fortress Lab was never our main objective. Indeed, mein Kaiser. Hey, better, Burai. I brought back what, are you, what you asked for. Ooh, you managed to infiltrate the lab? Oh, good word, Hakotsky. General Hitler, about your promise. I will keep it. I will allow you to meet your daughter. Finally. It's been five years since I last saw her. <sighs> so these are the blueprints you mentioned. That Kenzo Kabuto. He was going to mass produce it. And now we're going to use them to annihilate the human race. <laughs> it's been a while since I put my scientific skills to use. I'm going to analyze these blueprints and use them for my own purposes, Kabuto. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look-see here. We have some new parts we could equip on our robots. We've got some magnetic coating to increase mobility. So we have some dust proof to enable ground movement. Grass S rank movement to units weapon ranks on ground. And we also have uh, some more fuel tanks. And for the uh, train pilots, we also have the range plus five and max SP plus five. Very, very strong items which we will save until next time, maybe? No, we have some time. Yes, we'll save some the uh, actual uh, plot, the improvement until next time. But we'll have a look at some of the pilots here. We have here Kyoshiro, Kyoshiro Yuzuki, the guy in the Afro and aviator glasses. He has Excel, Assail, Strike, and is in the Galva FX2. The pilot of the Galva FX2 and an aphorism enthusiast. Aphorism? I need to look that up on what that means. He is a close friend of Kazia as well as they bought it the Sace Diamobic together. He may be appear he may appear as a calm and aloof, but he has a strong sense of justice. Nobody can, they can stop him when he files, flies into the rage. He often uses abusive language towards Kazia, but he doesn't do doesn't order to inspire him. <laughs> He was born in France, <laughs> but after losing his mother during his early childhood, oh, was cared for by his grandfather, Itosa Yuzuki, a very strong strict man who taught him the way of the sword. Yoshiro's skill is at an elite level. He's a war wary man who never goes out without his trusty sword on his back. He's not very good with women and tries to keep his distance from them, quoting, a wiser man never counts danger. His glasses are just a fashion statement, but his hairdo is real. He's an half an afro since he was a child. Huh. And let's see here, we have Sayaka. No, not Sayaka. Nana. The tomboy granddaughter of Professor Izumi and the sub-pilot of the Galvo FX2. In the first episode, she wore a flying helmet with goggles, so she was stopped wearing it at a certain point. She was... <laughs> reaching for straws now for, for bio. She was raised together with Kazuya as if they were brother and sister, though she developed an unrequited crush on him. Aww. This is the reason why she wouldn't accept Erika at first, as Kazuya only had eyes for her. She learned karate at the same time as Kazuya, and her skills are actually at a black belt level. Wow! Influenced by her grandfather, she is also very good with machines, and she once constructed an x-ray camera. That's amazing. She has a weird habit of making dog sounds when she's agitated or embarrassed. Oh. Oh, so that's why. Heh. <laughs> Silly Nana. Hey, Kazuya. The pilot Daimos and the master of Karateka. When he was five years old, his father was transferred to a base on the moon. Wow, and Professor Izumi raised as a foster parent in this period. He learned karate and marksmanship. Awesome. He later became an astronaut for the International Space Agency, assigned to the Space Diamobic. During its dispatch, they were found at Diamolite, Diamolite and brought it back. When he returned to Earth, he was assigned, he was assigned to the Daimobic base. In the accord to his father's will, he became the pilot of Daimos and fought against the Barmin Earth invasion. 
is a very impulsive man who stubbornly sticks to his own beliefs. His force, isn't will, force of will isn't just talk. During his astronaut training, he was involved in an accident that left him paralyzed. The woodman have given up on his dream. However, he was able to gain, regain the use of his body thanks to his incredible willpower and great effort. Wow. Wow. Speaking of a guy myself who actually nearly went through uh, a stroke, that, that's some willpower. He fell in love with an amnesiac girl, Erica. Little does he know that the love would finally lead to peace between Earth and Bar. Spoilers! Come on, game! His hobby is playing the drums. His skills are at a professional level. There's data that says that he usually ever cares for his hair once every 36 days. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, okay, and let's have a look at our newer units. So the two new units. Firstly is the Gava FX. It is a fighter made to protect the Diamobic. It is piloted by Kyoshiro Yuzuki and Nana Izumi. Its main duty is support Daimos. It's a real supply mech, so it's uh, and the flies, so it's actually quite useful compared to uh, boss. But anyways, it features two Vulcan guns at the side of the cockpit, missiles under the wings, and it can fire a beam from the antennas under its nose. Its fighting power is surprisingly high, and it saved Daimos numerous times. It can also operate in space. It is not known whether it's due to Kyoshiro's impressive skill, but it has proven to be very agile in evading enemy attacks. It was shut down once very rarely as opposed to how Daimos always sustained damage after its fights. Yes. Oh, Daimos, you fool. Ah, Daimos. Wonderful. Yep. The super robot created by the collaboration of Professor Ryuzaki and Professor Izumi. Its basic form, the Transer, was a truck, yes, created from re research and development of subterranean environments. So basically, he's just Optimus Prime then. It was later modified to be able to transform into a battle robot form, whose energy source is from Diamolite. Diamolite is a crystal created from neutrino reactions with light. Wow. These coagulated light particles collide with each other vehemently under gravity, continuously emitting an enormous amount of energy. However, Diamolite achieves nuclear reaction when its temperature surpasses 4 degrees Celsius. So if Diamos were to liberate all of its Diamolite, its body would become pure energy. Okay. It's, uh... So that's pretty much self-destructing, isn't it? Since Daimos is equipped with a system that traces the pilot's movements, it can reproduce Casio's karate accurately. However, damage inflicted on Daimos is also reflected on the pilot. That's not good. The Brillbot is geared mainly towards close-range combat with weapons such as the five shooters from mid-range attacks. The strongest attack is a Hisatsu Repu Sekenzuki, translated as sure kill, strong wind lunge punch combination of double blizzard released from the chest and a karate lunge punch. Well, the blizzard on the chest makes sense because it's actually a... Uh, it needs, you need to keep the diamond light cool, right? So it should have like a refrigeration unit. But anyways, in the series, Kazuya would use different techniques such as a Hisatsu Repu, repu Shotozuki, that's like a short kill, strong wind knife hand strike, or raging daimo chop. Okay. It's a 150 ton, 45 meter mech yep with a ton of weapons and as for next episode episode four we'll see what we need to actually do uh do but for now it's me i'm biggie and i'll be back see you guys in a bit bye for now <laughs>